Hey guys, so I've got the LKHN White Arc here and uh, you will have seen hopefully the previous video on this, the review, um, where it quite surprised me by its ability to chop through wood specifically, um, which for a blade of these statistics, which is essentially almost like a European rapier blade, perhaps some people might argue it's a bit more like a side sword, uh, which obviously is a modern term, but anyway, it denotes a sword that's got a little bit more breadth to the blade. But it is nevertheless a narrow blade, um, a very light blade, very narrow blade, very thin, very flexible, relatively flexible. Um, and I have very slightly touched up one of the edges on this now, so it's not quite factory sharp. It's very slightly finer on one edge, but not very much. I only spent a few minutes on that. Um, so what I've got behind me here is a, a fresh holly sapling. Uh, which I'm going to have a go at again, see if I can get some nice clean cuts through that and see what happens. Bearing in mind that this is a, well, you could argue this is primarily a thrusting sword, it's not primarily a cutting sword. It shouldn't be a particularly powerful cutter, but it's got very good edge geometry and it's light, which means you can accelerate it quickly. And this should put to rest uh, some of the impression that just because a sword is narrow that it can't cut well. And bear in mind this is wood, this is green wood, this is slightly on the abusive side of cutting, but I would argue actually not, because you've got to bear in mind that swords designed for warfare like this, or indeed for dueling, are likely to not only hit bone, and um, living bone's not as uh, hard or brittle as cooked bone, uh, but nevertheless they might hit bone, they might hit uh, shields, shield rims, uh, bits of armour, helmets, things like this. So they are designed to hit hard objects. Um, and hopefully keep a decent edge through that process. So let's see how it does on this uh, holly tree, small tree behind me, which I've felled. You can possibly even see how it's still got some of the holly leaves on it, so you can see it's holly. So you will see that is a clean cut, slightly curved, it probably flecked slightly when I hit it, but if you want to know how big that is, you compare it to my thumb, there we go, so diameter across is about one inch, and that's covering probably about two and a half inches from there to there. Very very nice cut conclusively, I mean I have cut uh, freshly killed uh, carcasses as well, I can say with some confidence that that would go through something about the size of a wrist, probably a forearm um, or a shin, something like that. Pretty, pretty damn good cut. Let's have another good cut on it. Again you'll see nice clean cut straight through the holly, you can see the centre of it there. A uh, little bit, that splitting you see is simply the bark uh, coming off, but you can see nice straight line through there and relative to my thumb, you can see the size of it there, relative to my face, the size of my nose. <laughs> Let's have another go. Again. Another dead straight, um, clean cut, straight way through, pretty damn big. Let's have another go. Let's try a rising cut this time. There we go. Dead straight, clean through, relative to the size of my hand or wrist. See there. Let's try. Let's try a horizontal cut. I very much doubt I'll be able to get through with a horizontal cut, but let's see what happens anyway. I suspect it will go about half or two thirds of the way through, and then it might snap. The rest of might get stuck. Yeah. So pretty much as predicted, it went half. Halfway through, but not all the way through. Okay, definitely with an angled cut, it's better. Let's just have a quick check on the sword. Perfectly straight on the edges, 
no deforming that I can see at all. No damage to the edges, no curling or anything bad. Um, got very slight movement in the guard, which actually happened in my last video, which I noted. It doesn't have any structural impact on the sword really at all. Pommel's still solid, grip's still solid. So a little bit of fun, I've made a, essentially a cross there and I'm going to try and take the arms off the cross uh, with two cuts, downwards cuts. Oh, I messed up the second one. This is the holly sapling, as you can see, much thicker than my thumb. Uh, it's a good solid uh, inch across round green hollywood um, on a horizontal, unsupported, unsecured branch. I'm going to try a diagonal downwards cut through this end of the limb. Very, very nice clean cut, diagonal line, absolutely smooth, you can rub your face on that, it's so smooth. No burring around the edges or anything, no tearing, no cracking, no splitting, very, very clean and see the size of that uh, compared to my hand, the end of my thumb, uh, much bigger, about twice the size of uh, my thumb, probably about an inch from there to there, a bit more than that, it's probably an inch across the branch, so maybe, yeah, it's more like an inch and a half from there to there. Very nice clean cut. Let's try one more. So that did go like 98% of the way through. There we go, it just broke on the bark on the other side, but you can see, there we go. Went all the way through there, and then just tore that last bit. But pretty damn clean considering the thickness of this branch. So let's try and finish off with a rising cut. There you go, nice and, nice and clean. Just to finish off, I just want to show something that's indicative. I'm gonna do a relatively control and light cut on this enormous um, trunk. So this was obviously, the, uh, <laughs> this was a probably 20 year old um, small tree that had to come down. This wood has been dead for quite a while, so it's a different kind of thing. This isn't green wood, this is, as you can hear, it's fairly dried out by this. But just to give you a rough idea of with a fairly small movement, fairly light cut, how far it might go into this kind of wood. I'm actually not sure of what type of uh, wood this is, I'm afraid. So there we go, because it's had all the branches and leaves taken off. So as you can see, fairly light cut there of the sort that might happen quite a lot in uh, sparring or fencing, fighting. And you can see it's gone from there to there into solid dried wood. It's not green at all. You probably unfortunately can't see on the camera, but inside it's very much white. So there's probably about an inch and a half from one side of the cut to the other. Um, fairly nasty, obviously, into meat, that'd be fairly. I'll do another one on the other side with just a little bit more force. It's actually relatively similar, very slightly bigger to the previous one. So from there to there, uh, and you can hopefully see cut through there. So fairly deep, probably maybe between 30 and 40 percent 
uh, through the wood, which when you consider the size of this limb is uh, really quite big and that's dried wood. So, and that's just a moderate hit. Incidentally, could I hit harder? Could I do more damage? Yes, but we have to remember if I do hit harder, I increase the chances of damaging the blade. So of course, it's better to damage, wound your target, but not damage your blade, than try and do a bit more damage and damage your blade. Um, if I look up the blade, it's still perfectly straight and there's no form of edge deformation or even bluntness or anything else. So all still pretty much in perfect condition. So never assume that because a blade is narrow, it doesn't have cutting power. This Chinese Jian from um, LK Chen, the White Arc, cuts fearsomely. And why does it cut fearsomely? Well, it's light so that you can accelerate it very quickly. Velocity is very important in this uh, physics equation. It's got very good edge geometry. It has no secondary or it has a micro uh, secondary bevel, but it's basically a single bevel. Um, and it just, it handles very, very well. It's got good distal taper, so it has a good uh, movement to it, which adds to the uh, kind of um, the speed, the velocity with which you can get that blade up to. And, you know, you can't imagine how powerful some of these narrow blades are just in the look of them if you're used to looking at broader bladed swords um, and yes for those people who ask this type of blade could be mounted on a rapier hilt could be mounted on a spadroon hilt the, it, the hilt of this is only important to the performance of the sword in the sense that you've got a good grip and you don't have a lot of extra mass there so actually having a light hilt in this uh, case enables you to maneuver and accelerate the sword quickly so having a light hilt is a good thing in this case so indeed when we're looking at spadroons or rapiers or certain types of so-called side sword don't assume that they can't cut fearsomely but I would add that whenever I'm doing this type of cutting, it might look abusive, but I'm actually being relatively careful. I'm not hitting as hard as I can, and I'm being super careful about my angles uh, because I'm very aware of the fact that this type of narrow blade is less forgiving. If you don't get the angle right, if you get your edge alignment slightly off, or you scoop the cut, it's more likely to bend or break the blade than with a broader sword or a thicker sword, a thick sword like a katana or a broader sword or like a falchion or a, uh, a Mesa or something like this. So quite simply, this type of sword is less forgiving in the cut and it's more prone to damage when hitting things like armor and helmets and shields and stuff like this. So indeed, broader bladed swords, generally speaking, are better cutting weapons. They will cut with a little bit more power and they're much more durable laying about with cuts in a typical fight scenario um, and encountering other weapons and things like this, but this sword, in the right circumstances, this type of narrow blade can cut really fearsomely. Thanks for watching, uh, give us a like and a subscribe, and I'll see you really soon again on Scholar Gladiatoria channel for another video. Cheers folks!